Uh, meanwhile, I saw this article last night as I was uh, looking at, at material out there. A uh, story on NFL.com from uh, Eric at home. NFL's top 10 most complete teams for 2023. So you you look at that going, okay, it's going to be Kansas City, it's going to be Philadelphia, and, and yeah, that's right. Yes. Number one, he's got the <laughs> Eagles. Uh, you know, so it was more about who else is on the list. So he's got the Eagles one, he's got Kansas City two. All right. <laughs> Number three, he's got the 49ers. Now, their, their big concern is that quarterback, but they do feel like roster-wise, outside of the most important position on the roster, which has a question mark attached to it because of uh, Purdy's injury, Trey Lance, is he going to be – the guy, Sam Darnold's out there battling for a spot. Who knows what's happening there? But they've got the 49ers at three. They've got the Cincinnati Bengals at four. And I can't help but root for Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. And I, I just enjoy watching that team play. I, you know. And AFC. Yeah, good. Yeah, for they're them. AFC. Do their thing. Now, yeah. if it, obviously, if it comes down to them and the Seahawks, <laughs> I want them to go down in a big fiery mess. But they're one of those teams I kind of like watching. I think they're, they're an exciting team. They got the Cowboys at five. I feel like the Cowboys are always loaded with individual talent. Just doesn't amount to much. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, for so long it was the coaching, and that really held them back. Was it the coach? I don't know. I it's the, I mean, Dak well, Prescott, I like GM a lot, too. but you know, he's they haven't gotten over the hum. Zeke Elliott's not there anymore. Micah Parsons is one of my favorite players in the league. That guy is just a monster out there. But you know, in the end, it just feels like they they, they, they underachieve every year. Uh, but they've got them at five. They got the Buffalo Bills at six. It's interesting seeing some of these teams we looked at as sort of perennial, you know, bottom of the barrel teams. The Bills were that for for a while. They were just a bad team. And you look at some of the teams behind them. They got the Ravens at seven, and and uh, they had their their uh, quarterback decide to show up to OTAs, which I think is really really generous of Lamar to show up out there after that fifty two million dollar a year deal. Uh, number eight, the New York Jets. They've got the New York Jets as the eighth most complete team. It's just, it's weird. I'm still getting used to the Jets being considered good, considered a threat, because forever they were viewed as this just hapless franchise that can't get it right, that, that continually makes mistakes with their top draft picks. And they they have done it recently with, with you know, Zach Wilson. is They don't even talk about the guy. He's the second overall pick. They don't even talk about him like him even being a consideration for the team anymore, which that's a big miss. That is a massive miss. So, uh, But there they are at number eight. Number nine, the Seattle Seahawks. How about that? The Seattle Seahawks are their ninth, in this writer's opinion, ninth most complete team. Um, and they, they do a big, you know, article on each one. Big, I won't go through the whole thing. But they just talk about, you know, they love their their – Three-headed wide receivers right there with uh, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and the addition of Jackson Smith and Jigba. They like the combo of Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet. Um, they love the addition of Draymond Jones and Jaron Reed and Cam Young in the draft and bringing Bobby Wagner back. So um, they said, quote, the secondary might not quite be ready for Legion of Boom 2.0 status, but there's a lot to like about the potential of Tariq Woolen, Devin Witherspoon, Kobe Bryant, and Mike Jackson. I guess you can throw R.D. Burns in there, too. Yeah. And Trey Brown, if you want. And then they bring in Quandre Diggs, Jamal Adams, Julian Love as well. So they feel like could make this unit one of the league's best in time. I think I am more encouraged by the fact that if you and by just the way, just to finish out, number 10, yeah. the Los Angeles Chargers. And then uh, your team, Bob, the Lions, just missed the cut. Oh, I'm sorry. I know you have to take the rest sorry. of the segment off. Yeah, Disappointed that's, there. That's, that's, that's disrespect. Uh, yeah. Additional teams considered. The Browns, the Lions, the Jags, and the Dolphins. So okay. I'm more encouraged by the fact that if you look at this list, and you, I mean, just common knowledge too, think about the teams that are good in the NFC. It's very top heavy. There's mm -hmm. a significant drop off after the Eagles and 49ers. All of the talent has left the NFC over the past couple of seasons. The, if the Cowboys right here are the third best NFC team, I think the Seahawks are on par with the Cowboys, especially with all these question marks that Dallas has and their perennial underachieving. You don't really know what you're getting on offense with the Cowboys this year. They don't have a running back right now because Tony Pollard uh, broke his leg and has that high ankle sprain. You mentioned Zeke is gone. And yes, they, they are the underachievers. So with where the Seahawks offense is, I would put them ahead of the Cowboys right now and say, yeah, it's the defense that still is a question mark. But in terms of balance, they are probably the third best and most balanced team in the NFC which is incredibly encouraging to think about where we were last offseason at this point. And you're not a, a complete picture yet. You still have a couple of months before the season begins. But if you take that expected leap and that expected growth, 
why can't the Seahawks be among the best in the NFC this season? Not to say they are at par with the Eagles, but this Eagles team also from a year one to year two, and in terms of a two-year span, they were that team that two years ago went into the playoffs as the last playoff team, and they looked overmatched. It led to the question, why did we expand the playoffs? The Eagles looked terrible. They got embarrassed in that wild card game. A year later, they're in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say the Seahawks are going to do that, but you can see a similar progression in, in the fact that teams can get better quickly in the NFL. You make a big addition. You you sign the right players. Your draft picks develop. It's not a long, arduous process to get back up like it is in baseball where the A's are going to be miserable for a long time or teams that decide to bottom out and it's just awful. You can get good quickly in the NFL for a number of reasons. So I'm encouraged by that. And to say that this is a starting point, the Seahawks are arguably the third or fourth best team in the NFC. That's highly encouraging. 